Okay, so um, this is an article from Mixmag, right? Mixmag got this cool little article out. They put it. They put some good features out. You know, the writers they just they do a good job. Not as good as maybe not as well crafted as maybe a resident advisor, maybe, but they do a good job of consistently putting out quite cool features. I like the stuff they're doing, man. So whoever's out there writing or commissioning some of these pieces congratulations and bravo to you you're doing a, an amazing job so this is a, 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 a title a, a, an article titled festival fiasco poorly organized events are putting you at risk and ultimately very very true right and this is kind of coming off the back of um ja rule going oh do you see you seen that video actually this before we read that you seen flipping ja rule going on the breakfast club talking about how he wants to redo uh, the fire festival again bloody hell some there's no some people have no hubris in it no sense of awareness no self-reflection um no humility right he somehow thinks he can it's like what makes what gives him any right to think that he can do a festival better than some of the festivals that are out there now, especially after that kind of fiasco that happened and again it's really bizarre too how watching that documentary again documentaries are quite they're not the truth right they're not the whole truth or nothing but the truth they paint a particular narrative we've seen it happen with the michael jackson thing but i'm just surprised not calling for anyone to be arrested or anything but isn't it surprising how he didn't get in any trouble at all? Like, he didn't get slapped on the wrist. He didn't get convicted. Not fine. He didn't spend a couple of days in prison. Nothing. He just got away with it scot-free. Like, everything was Billy McFarlane's fault. It's, I, I don't know if that's true. Watching that video, he was complicit in something, right? Or or, gleave, or willfully ignorant or some other things. But anyway, um, Ja Rule and Irv Gotti were on Breakfast Club. Minus Charlemagne the God, which, you know, again, was disappointing because I think I would have made an more interesting conversation. But he said something along the lines of this, right? This is a uh, jar rule. What is, what is what did he say? He said this. Let's 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 put this on here. This guy, man, Mama Mia, literally. When they need to say, "Yo, motherfucker, it wasn't me," right? You know what I'm saying? And here's my side of the story. I... Okay, so here's him talking. Let's see. And it's just giving the artist a voice when they need to say, "Yo, motherfucker, it wasn't me," right? You know what I'm saying? And here's my side of the story, and I don't need to get propped up in front of a microphone or or sit down with Gail King or any some funny shit. To say, yo, this is my story, and that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? And I don't need to say much more about it. And that's what I did. I just said, you know what? I'm gonna just take the Twitter. I'm gonna go out and say my what, what I, you know, what I'm saying what I need to say. And that's that. I said what I said, and that's it. I'm not gonna sit back and talk to talk about it over and over and over and over, and over again. But now here's the thing that I want to bring to light. And I'm like, <laughs> the crazy shit is when you look at what happened with my festival and everything, right? Here's what I said. Okay. When I look at the big picture, right? Big picture is rich, rich, rich mm -hmm. white kids went to my festival, uh -huh. enjoyed, didn't get the tents that they paid for in the car. Correct. Okay. It's an issue, but it's not like. Come on, man. This guy's underselling the problem, right? It wasn't just like, really? Is that is that all you're saying? Just the tents or the problem? What happened to the stage? What happened to the musicians? What happened to the toiletries? What happened to the infrastructure? What happened to the lady that had to, the, the, the catering? Like, this guy, man, mama. This reminds me of a lot of startup founders I've worked with. One who I won't name by name, who knows exactly who he is. This is just like, sometimes it's like, there is a certain, maybe it's a psychopath um, um, trait in some people. This kind of, because sometimes it can work to your benefit, right? This kind of level of just blindly, um, believing in your ability to execute something that you've obviously shown you can't do is somehow a, a precursor to the big dictating how successful you will be in some respects right that kind of idea that no that's steve jobs i that's steve jobs rumor or story where he told them to design something about the iphone in under two weeks something like that and they said it should it should take six months They're like no i need it in two weeks right that aspect of like throwing out impossible deadlines and then pushing your team to the brink and then they do it and then you're like looking at it as like you know you're the great leader i don't know but this is weird like it's not you know money can be replaced you know what i'm saying these things can can, can be you know replaced now i'm gonna fast forward to rolling loud just last week mm -hmm. or two weeks ago. six people got married mm -hmm. <laughs> Lil Wayne said I'm not fucking performing Because of police presence at the venue Kodak Black got arrested at the venue You know what I'm saying NBA young boy's car got shut up His girl got shot Why well, we ain't hearing nothing about the way When these documentaries coming out You know what I'm saying when it's, when it, Now I'm amazing like, <laughs> He's trying so much shit He's just continue to finish it anyway I think, It feels like when it's black People being fucking 
ostracized and fucked over. It don't mean nothing. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Right. But white kids that didn't get their tents that they fucking were promised and went on and party. You know what I'm saying? And, the yeah, and went on, you know what I'm saying? And went on and partied in Miami or went on and partied in the Bahamas. They made two documentaries about this and I tried to make me fucking the Black Eye Festival. You know what And that? my festival wasn't even the West Coast. Niggas was getting raped at fucking, uh, in the mosh pits at fucking, uh, 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 what's the shit called? Um, uh, the shit they did, uh, Stop, stop. I like how no one jumped in to say no one wants to say no one wants to jump on the ledge with him. All right, Jarrell's pissed off about that, but hey, let, let, let's just leave it as that because he's talking about his ass. But let's let's go back to this, this article. So, festival fiasco, poorly organized events are putting you at risk. Um, in the post fire fire reality, events walk a tightrope between an ambitious and ambiv- and oblivion, which you saw a lot with. Is this really the was um Tanakon the precursor of fire festival? I'm not too sure, but that whole idea that these individuals think that again i'm not too sure if it's because of no one's put on a club night but i've put on a few club nights right i've also put on a few parties in venues that weren't clubs and anyone that's put on a club night is also put on a party in a place that isn't a club or a bar you know how difficult the gap the gap in skill organization ability to put those two events is you know night and day let alone a festival let alone a festival let alone a festival right just just because already in a club night, you're already putting it in a bar or a club that has the facilities to accommodate you, right? It's usually a basement bar or a nice looking bar, great acoustic, the speakers are all set up, they've got an area for you to dance, they've got a bar already in place, they've got staff that can work there, security that usually work there. Like, there's really things in place that you can just add on to. A venue that doesn't do music or doesn't have a, a bar culture in it or something or whatever, or clubbing culture, you have to what? Clear out the furniture, maybe buy some furniture, paint a wall, put a table down, hire equipment, hire staff to work there, hire, get get a bar, security. There's so many things to do, right? And that isn't even concerning the overall building, right? The, the toiletries and stuff that you have to do if you're doing a festival out in a park somewhere. It's insane level of work. It's insane. It's not just putting a, a couple of stages up, a, a couple of port, a port loose and just calling it a day, especially if you want people to come back. That's the problem people don't realise with festivals. Festivals, like, um, I think Houghton did the same thing, right? Houghton had, I think the only reason people were, were worried of, or complaining about Houghton, the first Houghton festival, I think, was the toilets. But overall, the vision of doing this amazing festival in a park somewhere, I think it's, in, I think it's outside of England, right? I mean, so outside of London. Uh, very scenic, um, kind of a hippie vibe. They pick some really cool, esoteric, eccentric, um, far-reaching, eclectic artist there. And it wasn't a stereotypical, like, you know, banger, banger, banger DJ. Really wide variety of, of people there. They have they had really good activities. They had yoga, meditation sessions. Like, a really cool vibe, right? And the only thing that got fucked up was the toilets. So then what happened happening, people were loyal to the figure said, no, we see something in this festival, Houghton. We're going to come back again next year. What people that don't realize is that sometimes if you put a festival on with a good lineup, but you fuck up everything else, but the lineup is good, people won't come back again because they're like, you know what? It's not worth it. I'm not going to queue up for 17 hours, queue up for 17 hours to get in or to get a drink just to see my favorite artists play because it's not worth it overall and the overall bargain of a thing. So sometimes they don't realize that you only really get one shot at a festival. And then little by little, you die a death of a thousand cuts because people would still come because there's good value for money right paying 100 quid to go see like you know me at junction tomorrow i paid 35 pound for a two before 2 p.m ticket and i'm gonna go effectively go see i don't know six djs in one night right which is incredible because most of the djs if they played at a venue like xoyo or fold or phonics and stuff i'll be playing 25 quid plus so i'm already you know i already made my money back seeing two people it's amazing so sometimes i, I don't know how why they're so um naive in that respect or they're so willful gleeful, gleeful to kind of scam people when they know they're only going to get one shot at this ever again but anyway here we go um uh we the fun loving summertime festival goers are forced uh are faced by an all too common uh foe the overselling and understaffing of events again happens so many times especially in london especially in the uk it's so annoying um this firm must it's strange too because we're the nation of fucking festivals right we do open air festivals all the time every even boroughs do little summer fay things we have it in, in newham we go to west Ham park or other places where they do these little summer fay fun fair things that they have a you know a couple of rides have a stage there they, they, we always do these things i don't know why suddenly now it's become like such a hard thing to kind of manage but anyway um uh, the phone most commonly manifest as a stereotypical i'm so bummed we weren't front row for Tyco to this porto line is longer than my grand's <laughs> mammy's feet surely it does 
But these things are to be expected, understood, and are little consequence. Also, you never need to be in front row for Tyker. <laughs> My chief grievance relates to the increasingly frequent, where is the nearest hospital? Do you do by chance have any water? Which is strange, right? Again, water, Jesus Christ. This, that should be a, a flipping, you know, uh, I don't know. By um, Big name talent buying means diddly squat. If operations and infrastructure are unfunded, um, overworked and haphazardly supported, terrible things have happened under these conditions alone. Worse yet, certain production teams have risked the safety of patrons, staff and volunteers during climate disasters for the potential of profit and prestige. We are first of all did exactly the same thing the other day and you know the, the founder seems like he doesn't give a fucking fuck. Um, Cancelled acts, long lines and torrential rainfall each have power to Ill immutate tiny bopper rave biz bunnies into a destructive mob of entitlement. Combine all these festival foes and ugly scenes occur rather quickly. If the festival staff is wholly undertrained and ill-equipped to handle the fallout, the risk rise exponentially. After witnessing various blunders over the last years, uh, from the uh, apocalyptic dy dystopia of Fire Festival to treading water at Tomorrow World's main stage and now infamous Nightmare of Block Weekender, um, the fact that these events this has continued to happen is unsettling to say the least of course because you'd hope that over time really sometimes you have an event like i said houghton was a one where i think the toilets were fucked up or something happened there's one element of it but overall people saw the general vision and they got what they were trying to do they're like you know what this is the first time it got you know they're gonna iron out some chinks and then i think since then the like, last time went pretty well and then now they're having another festival that you know so far has sold out pretty has sold pretty well too so there is an element of patrons understanding when you're doing something the first time that it's not going to be correct or it's not going to be all the way perfect but some festivals just continually do shit and some of it i don't know if it has to do with the fact that you outsource everything a lot of teams do that right a lot of festival organizers just do it for a cash grab they book loads of people or do it as a form something to put on their cv um to kind of boost their profile so they can go work for a bigger company or bigger production team i don't know but maybe it's because they outsource everything and i think there's no central control i'm not too sure but some people are just really bad at putting on events too that might just be it um it's no longer rock and roll and dungeon techno or, re or renegade vibes when you're being evacuated from a Dayglo warehouse flooded out to your tent or crushed by a barricade. Since the prevalence of massive festivals isn't going anywhere, it seems the event production industry has reached a necessary turning point. This is a video here. Uh, safe to say, We Are Festival will never happen again. People being trampled on barricades being thrown. Not enough minutes. I mentioned that the other day. This is a little video. Let's see what this is. Scary shit. Look at people just stampeding like... And this is all their fault, right? This is all their fault, what we are festival organization-wise. There's a video of people here just stampeding. There's barricades upright that should be flat, right? And if you've seen those barricades, you know how dangerous they are because they've got on the edges. They're really sharply cut. Um, they're not smoothed over. Some of the edges are sharply cut, especially the feet. They're really sharp, especially the edges where they're meant to link uh, each barricade together. They're super sharp. So if that thing hits you in your skin... Whilst you're outside in the sun, dehydrated, your skin is drying up. That you are, you are bleeding a lot. Um, the 2019 festival season has barely begun, and there's already some fresh examples of on-site tragedy. Uh, just within the past couple of weeks, um, we've seen two fiascos with panicked masses out of for their own necks over the next person. Seen during a stampede at We Are Festival, along with riots at Governor's Ball. Um, both these incidents could and should have been prevented but the fact that they weren't is a little surprise we are festival caused dismay a couple of weeks ago when wait times to enter the event exceeded three hours patrons queued in extreme heat without access to shade or hydration stations the cause of delay the box office reportedly didn't have enough waistbands for the amount of tickets sold they closed the entry gate and world jesus christ so they oversold the festival as they always do right that's why whenever you see someone saying online we are 99 sold 80 percent sold don't go to that festival right they're trying to oversell the festival they're trying to make more money instead of trying to um because we've all been to places where there is it's over capacity right and it's not fun you can't move around it's just not fun it's not the great environment that you want it to be you want it to be just right so the fact that they're over capacity and the fact that they don't have the staff to even facilitate over capacity is just crazy. So they want to make more money, but they don't want to spend more on staff, which is really, really bad. And there's a, bit, and there's a, a picture online. This is from a girl called Chloe J. Nichols. And this is the girl I posted the other day who's got a, now a massive scar on her leg. That I, I'm Because I remember people saying that we are festival, there was a girl, a blonde girl who had like a massive scar wound and it was pouring out of blood and she was kind of in and out of consciousness. And I guess this must be the girl. It just says here in a tweet, thanks at We Are Festival and Reese We Are Festival, I think is the founder of it. Uh, I'm pretty sure that is the founder, dude, right? Uh, yep. Uh, now scarred for life because your incompetence and negligence. Not a single message saying sorry. 
I've been coming to We Are Festival for years, spent so much money in there, and this is the treatment we received. I almost died, as did others. Yeah, really disgusting, man. That's a massive scar for a girl to have on her leg because she went to a fucking festival. Like, insane. Um, so after baking for a few hours, the justifiably frustrated crowd inexcusably surged to forward, toppling barricades while crushing attendees and security staff rendered ineffective, ineffectual and listless. Several attendees had to be hospitalized from injuries resulting from the stampede. Chloe Nicole, a 30-year-old casino dealer and long-time attendee of the festival, suffered deep gash on her left leg after being struck by a barricade and then trampled. Nicole's waited nearly half an hour to be seen by medical staff before then being hospitalized to receive stitches on her injury. In speak to reports of on the line nicole said i wish i was in so much pain i thought i was going to die so much for the joyous start to jesus christ man this is a textbook result of production failure if they had enough wristbands the cupid's immunity would have moved along swimmingly enough and the stampede would not have reverted that said there's also infrastructure and staffing failure infrastructure failed to provide enough shade on queues rarely available water and immovable box office barricades now again this goes to show just how um ignorant and silly and short-sighted and naive Tana Montague was to throw Tanacon. Imagine this is We Are Festival who've done We Are Festival for a long time. Production team is, you know, say what you want about them. They've done they've done they've organized a festival a while, yeah? They've done it a, a few times. And they are having these issues. Imagine what Tana could do with her friends. Yeah, she's got a good network of people to call upon, but she had the 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 cockiness that, to think that she could throw a festival that would rival VidCon, right? <laughs> with all their issues too. VidCon had issues. They always have issues every year. You always see videos of, of kids complaining about VidCon. And let's see, she somehow thought that she could do the same thing. Like, crazy. Like I said, I think some people haven't done club nights. If you do one club night, right, and then you organize a party in a place that doesn't usually have um, raves, you will see how you then have a lot more respect for people that put on festivals. You honestly will do. There's no other way to say it. Like, even just organize your own party in the fucking Nando's, right? Like, come on, man. Like, how hard is it to co-host people to come out, to coordinate times, get tables and shit? And fuck me. Some people are just, the self, the delusion is just insane. Um, the modest investment required to remedy these various ills equates to a silver of cost of needed to book a single headliner. To put it bluntly, we are first of all cared more about the optics and the top of their lineup than the patrons they wrangled like cattle to pay the bill. Ultimately, too, right? Sunday shenanigans at Governor's Ball could have been easily avoided as well, though admittedly at a greater cost. The weather warnings had been readily broadcast throughout the day. The Governor's Ball production team anticipating a highly likely to catch up thunderstorm the afternoon. There was a similar chance of another bad evening. They held the gates closed until the, the, the dam. The dawn near sundown and light on warnings before deciding to risk it all at the buzzer. The gates finally opened at 6 p.m. A mandatory evacuation was issued at 9.35 p.m. Unfortunately uh, for the event producers, but more for attendees, Bedlam broke out after the event was cancelled, which compounded on itself in the face of an extreme weather pattern. Festival girls were trapped at Radlands Island, huddled un together under overpass, and then people were just smashing into these fucking things that governor's bore, isn't it, right? These passive things are... Uh, it's just true though, right? Once once the organization is poor and the kids have nothing to do and they're stuck in some place, cattle uh herded like cattle, there's no there's no other thing they're gonna do but just smash everything around them, right? <laughs> Bloody hell. In an AMA hosted by Reddit yesterday, the governor's board production executive addressed the many concerns um, earnest and in-depth fashion. The most pointed criticism came for the, of the security staff. Multiple attendees reported a disjointed message coming from security. The main stage emergency exits were blocked off by before the evacuation, which forced the crowd into a slow-moving bottleneck. In response to this qualm, one of the production teams named Tom replied, for the weather we were experiencing, the specific plan for severe weather event does not call for emergency exit to be used, but rather to instruct people to leave through the main entry and exit. This defeats the point of having emergency in it in the first place. Um, a Redditor dubbed uh, Footcramp95 wrote his this cheeky message. Maybe if God Ball was more of a music festival and less of a dis dis designated Instagram convention, this would be less of a problem, which is true. Music industry landscape has become a fraught enterprise since the dawn of the internet, now being predominantly reliant on performances over record sales. As a result, many festivals have been forced to adopt a do or die mentality. If an event it doesn't sell out, the necessary nest egg to produce future events is oftentimes lost, which is true, right? So many festivals so far have been cancelled in because they haven't sold out, which is insane to think that you have to sell out to in order to kind of have, especially considering the amount of festivals that are going on. Festival season used to start now. Now it's starting in fucking March, right? Sometimes February. Like, insane. It goes all the way until October. It's fucking insane how long it goes. Um, 
In the post five fights of reality, nobody wants to end up in the backlash received by Jaro and Billy McFarland. Even so, many production companies are forced to walk the same tightrope between ambition and oblivion that play countless events before them. The answer seems simple, though. Uh, production teams need to place a greater priority, i.e. funding, on the integrity of their staff, the strength of their infrastructure and foresight of disaster planning. This also means that artists need to accept a more proportional share of the proverbial pie. Asking for a multi-billion dollar deal for a couple of hours of time is well and good insofar as a crowd paying the bill isn't endangered by attendance which is true right so they're saying that festivals artists need to accept that festivals will pay less money because they're having to spend more money on infrastructure right which is true because you don't want to go to a festival the bad the worst thing to be an artist is to go to a festival play have an amazing set the people at the front who are having a good time are having a great time you're unaware of what's going on outside or over the left hand side you're just concentrating on the people in front of you and you get on twitter and people are saying oh I, i'm so sorry i missed you uh this festival is awful i got crushed my leg got ripped open like that will make you feel so horrible right that you went there to go play to connect with your fans or to gain new audiences and all they can remember is the fact that they couldn't hear you it was too low and they got crushed on, on the way to seeing you play it's like that's not the right way to go about things um uh, ensuring the infrastructure and operational staff is able to effectively support an event should always come before paying out a headlining act it's the responsibility of production teams to make the judgment in parallel if a dangerous weather plan is forecast the fat cats at the top uh, need to cancel some dates and eat their losses which is true simple event production is always a gamble especially with outdoor venues and the rising threat of climate change there are no guarantees in the words of george hall one of the founders of block weekend no one likes the idea of that promoters are gambling with your money but the alternative is that they are run by a very large face organization while this is true producers aren't only taking liberties which is true but again promoters gambling with your money is still promoters still need to have a level of you know expertise or professionalism or just wanting to do a good job right you can't just say because i'm a promoter things are going to go wrong i'm not a face organization just get people in to help you out then do you know what i mean do the job properly plan ahead of time maybe concentrate on doing it a one-day festival instead of a two-day festival right just try and make that work and again, maybe there might be the education needed for the consumer too. Instead of having a festival stacked with the top 100 DJs rated by DJ Mike, maybe have a festival with some lesser known acts, some local acts, some people that are on the B, C tier. And people can, but then again, people don't back that in it. People want to just go see the big glitz, glitz, glitzy people. Like, I, like I'm like i saying with Junction, I'm effectively paying, I'm effectively eager to go because it's, you know, in relation to the guests that they have on and what i'm paying it works out really well so i don't know man i'm not too sure maybe it's a it's a it's a conversation that needs everyone's participation right in that respect uh the well privileged few yeah but yeah it's a good article i recommend you check it out um i'll link it in the show notes for you guys that want to see it it's called festival fiasco poorly organized events are putting you at risk and it's written by one mix